Now we are welcoming David, who will talk to us about running OpenSea Accelerated LLMs on your phones. Hello, every hello everyone, and thank you for coming uh, for the talk. And I will start who I am. Uh, I'm David Heidelberg. I work on Mesa 3D as a developer, and currently I'm contracted by Collabora to work on CI. And in free time, I work on mobile embedded Linux, and I'm an Alpine and Debian and Post Market OS contributor. And let's go for the topic. So uh, content, uh, just quick introduction, what these things are about, uh, how it looked before uh, OpenCL and these standards we have these days. Uh, what we have now, how it works, I will, have, uh, I will show you an example with running PostMarket OS uh, with OpenCL and uh, what we can expect in future. So uh, first, uh, who, who ever heard about OpenCL here? Like, okay, most of you. So uh, OpenCL allows you to run uh, your C or C++ code on CPU or GPU or specific DSP or uh, FPGA or whatever you can find, kind of. This is one thing. Second thing, Mesa 3 is uh, part of GPU drivers you have on all the Linux systems, or Linux computers. And it also works on Android and Windows and um, I think Haiku uh, or something exotic. And uh, last thing uh, which I used for my talk is TinyGrad framework, which allow you to run uh, stuff like GPT or Stable Diffusion or other uh, interesting projects which you can run usually on GPU. So uh, how it looked before uh, the compute we know right now, like CUDA, ROCKM, OpenCL. So um, you could do the computation or CPU, but uh, CPU has high overhead because it's meant to run uh, classical com computer programs and not highly parallelized uh, software. Or you can use uh, OpenGL, and with OpenGL you could squash computations into OpenGL workloads, but it was a uh, big hack and workaround, and uh, some scientists did it, but not like widely used uh, between people. Um, so currently we have option, we have al already uh, CPUs with uh, multiple cores and multiple threads, but uh, the overhead is still here. Uh, we have GPUs, which are much faster and much more easily parallelized, but uh, they still have some overhead. And then we have uh, smaller units like NPUs, which you can find in new phones or new devices, new dev boards. And these are uh, optimized to run machine learning or AI workloads. But usually uh, in the hardware you get, like Linux phones, you, you still don't have, the, you still don't have uh, these accelerators in the place. Uh, for new phones and new devices, you have them already. So um, probably all of, all of ha, who of you uh, used OpenCL or any acceleration to run something? Okay, m m much less than the knowledge of OpenCL. So uh, you, you can do all the stuff with this, uh, image processing, and these days language models are most popular, I would say. So uh, this is motivation. And what we have like in open source world. Uh, in general, you can use multiple technologies, but I will talk mainly about OpenCL, because OpenCL gives you one thing which nothing else can, you can have CUDA or ROCKM, but these are usually vendor specific. So if you're going to write, let's say, software for your phone, and then like you want something which will run everywhere. And you cannot achieve that with CUDA at all because it's proprietary and closed. Uh, you can eventually do that with ROCKM, but it's only IMD 
for AMD cards. And so only alternative which remains is OpenCL. And in 2012, we had Clover implementation in Mesa. And I was very excited about that. And I was like, wow, now everything will be faster. Maybe it's associated with me running Gen 2 back then and like wanting everything be compiled and much faster than uh, on Debian or anything else. Uh, but uh, for me, it didn't work. Uh, I lost interest pretty quickly because, um, to be honest, like with Clover, nothing was working for me. So I gave up. But uh, in 2022, uh, there came a rust rustical implementation to Mesa 3D, and uh, it supported latest OpenCL standard. Uh, it g gained support for Intel and multiple drivers. You, you can see these uh, supported drivers are Intel AMD uh, Mali, which is, uh, for example, present on PinePhone Pro. And of course, you can run on CPU or you can run over Vulkan with Zinc. Um, there is work in progress for multiple drivers, including Asahi, uh, Qualcomm Adreno, which is, for example, present in OnePlus 6, which is pretty popular Linux phone and which I also own. And uh, Vivante, which is uh, used in, for example, Librem 5 and Raspberry Pi, everyone knows, I assume. So um, here is example how it looks like if you run uh, LLM model on uh, OnePlus 6. It runs, it's not that slow, um, it's not that fast, but on the other hand, uh, it runs, which is amazing. This is GPT-2, as you can see from the answer, it's not very clever. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, it runs, and this is the general purpose model. So um, currently I tried to run uh, some GPT-3 based models, uh, some minimal ones, but it's not there yet. But GPT-2 works for me. And so it means for every app you developing or you thinking about, you can consider using some smaller models and already run it, for example, on the phones. And uh, what is interesting is performance, of course. Because if you run the model without uh, GPU, so you run on CPU, uh, you get load on eight cores, 100%, to four weak cores, four strong cores, get fully utilized. But uh, if you switch to OpenCL, you get hardly two cores at 20% of usage, and it's much faster, as you can see. So and we're talking about small phone. Here is the slide if anyone wants to try and you have post-market OS, post OS on your phone. So you can apply these simple steps to get in the place where it will be running. Uh, I guess you will not try right now, but uh, after you see the slides, you can click through it and uh, install this stuff. And uh, in general, where to open CL and uh, compute heading? Um, you can do a lot. Uh, it's uh, kind of widely supported already. There is a lot of progress done on Rusty, Rusty CL, Rustical on, uh, on Linux. So I believe in one year you can assume on every device you will be able to run some CL. So you can use it for your workloads. For example, uh, what I heard just today before the talk, that libcamera, which is used for processing uh, input from uh, Linux cameras on phones, considering using OpenCL workloads for processing. So uh, it will get popular soon, I hope so. And so um, what I'm thinking is the most interesting part, you can start relying on it because for today, like applications like Blender or GIMP are used, uh, are able to use OpenCL, but it's not something you can count on. But that's hopefully changed very soon. And another thing to talk about is uh, what's going to happen next, because OpenCL 3 is pretty good specification, but if you compare to CUDA from NVIDIA, uh, it's really lacking. It's best we have right now, but uh, it's not that amazing. It's amazing enough to be fast, to provide uh, 
offload, uh, which is uh, good quality, but it's not that great uh, uh, compete with CUDA. So uh, I recommend, for example, David Early talk about the uh, future of OpenCL and uh, about some standardization which would fit all vendors. So it wouldn't end up like one vendor trying to push his technology and disallow other vendors to contribute or uh, use it. So something like OpenCL4, we will see what happened. Um, so this is eventually future. Uh, is a little bit unclear, but so far the OpenCL looks pretty good. Uh, Clover implementation and Mesa, which was from 2012, is pretty dead because no one uses it, no one maintains it. We dropped it from CI um, approximately half a year ago. So it's not counted, it's just waiting for deletion. And last thing I want to point out is like uh, even the low power device as a phone can provide uh, some nice acceleration with OpenCL and it's really visible difference. So uh, a few credits, uh, Carol, Carol Herbst for bringing Rustical alive because um, that was a very nice project and he was integrating Rust-based software into Mesa, which is C and C++ based. So that's a pretty challenging task. Uh, Rob Clark for working on Freedreno because uh, are, are there are here any uh, one plus six users? Okay, right, so, so the G, you know the GPU works pretty well on these devices, so this is a lot of his work. And Dmitry Barishkov, I hope I uh, read the name right, good, uh, for preparing the merch request for Freedren on Rusty, Rustical. And it's not uh, merged yet, uh, but uh, it's pretty close, needs some polishing. And for uh, the TinyGrad and GPT-2, it works well enough. And of course, many others who contributed. So uh, thank you for your attention and uh, fire the questions. So uh, thanks for the talk. A question regarding your uh, comparison of the workload. Uh, do you, did you check the uh, load on the GPU when you have a, when you uh, were running this model? So when you compare the co uh, eight cores versus uh, GPU? Uh, I haven't uh, checked the workload on GPU, but I assume uh, it was pretty high. But yeah, it's. It, what I forgot to mention is uh, it's not yet optimized and no one tried to profile it to give a good performance. And TinyGrad project is also meant mostly for the powerful AMD GPUs or um, let's say NVIDIA, even the Intel is not that popul uh, popular there. So it means these results which you've seen are still highly unoptimized software. So it has a lot of, probably a lot of uh, chances for improvements and, uh, you know, better performance. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Um, since newer, for example, Qualcomm SOCs also have an actual NPU in the SOC, are you aware, like, if, if it's possible to run OpenCL on this, like, uh, and kind of what could be missing and if, Anybody's working on this or something? Yes, uh, the new hardware has MPUs, and for example, my one of former colleagues, uh, Tomeo Visoso, working on Etnaviv acceleration for MPUs. So recently in Mesa was um, integrated part of Teflon framework, which allows interaction between Etnaviv, which is Vivante GPUs like in. Um, it's a newer generation than this uh, in Librem 5. And you can run TensorFlow networks on the NPU directly. But so far, only one uh, vendor at Navev, uh, Vivante, and uh, one device is supported, I think. How's the RAM usage? Uh, I think the, the model I used is like 500 megabytes, so it's pretty nice. Um, like nothing serious. Uh, the phone has eight gigabytes. So uh, anyway, uh, for the RAM usage, uh, it would be more interesting with GPT-3 models. But um, 
I, I think on the phones, uh, the language models are useful only if they are special, specialized and, uh, you know, cut down to appropriate the power which uh, the phone offers. Because, of course, you cannot run full uh, LAMA uh, GPT model on, uh, which has eight gig requires 8 gigabytes of RAM on, uh, or VRM on a uh, phone, which has 8 gigabytes of RAM. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Well, that's it then. Another big round of applause for David. Thank Next you. talk is in 15 minutes.